Okay guys, let's take a look at chapter 8 here. So we used proportional relationships of corresponding angle bisectors, altitudes, and medians of similar triangles. We set up proportions and did that last chapter. And now we're going to look at a geometric mean between two numbers. So what is a geometric mean? The square root of the product of two numbers. So you, if you get two numbers, you multiply them, you take the square root, you've got the geometric mean. So this is the proportion that allows us to find the geometric mean, but if you solve that proportion, you get just what I said, the square root of the product. So to work this out, find the geometric mean between two and, and 50. Well, we need to go ahead and multiply two and 50, get 100, and then we're gonna take the square root of that, which of course is 10. All right, so pause the video, give this a shot. Okay. We said the geometric mean was going to be the square root of the product. Okay, so 3 times 12 is 36. And the square root of 36 is 6. So there you go. Okay, you got 6, give yourself a pat on the back. All right, the, the majority of this section is going to be relating to this idea here that if I draw in a right triangle, if I draw the altitude to the hypotenuse, so I have a right triangle, I start at the right angle and I draw an altitude down perpendicular to the hypotenuse, I create three similar triangles, okay? And I'm gonna explain to you in a little bit how to determine which ones are similar. I think that's gonna make our life a little bit easier. Um, but for now, know that we do create that situation. We could prove it by angle, angle, okay? Wouldn't be a difficult proof. Okay, write a similarity statement to identify these. So what I tend to do, you guys, is I pick, um, I make up an angle, okay? And then I know that all the angles have to add up to, to 180 in a triangle, and so then I can, I can write the similarity statement better. So let's say I say this is a 60 degree angle here. Well, then this little triangle on the left, since it's a right triangle, this is 90, this one has to be 30. And if this is 30, and that's a 90 degree angle up there, this one has to be 60, which makes this one 30, okay? So when I write my similarity statement, I start with the big one, so let's go EFG. Okay, now when I say EFG, that was 60 degrees, 90 degrees, 30. So 60, 90, 30. Well, in the triangle on the left, if I want to go 60, 90, 30, that's going to be EHF. And if I want to go 60, 90, 30 with the triangle on the right, that's going to be FHG. Okay? So, could you write them in a different order? Well, if I started this out differently, I could, but they should all match, right? The first letters should all have the same angle measure. The second letter should have the same, same angle measure, et cetera. So that's the easiest way, I think, to write that similarity statement. The book sometimes likes to uh, sketch this into three separate triangles and then go from there, which is one way to do this, is to separate. So you've got some options. That's what the triangle looks like if you put the right angle on top for each one. So that would work for you as well, but we should get the same result, okay? So write a similarity statement identifying the three similar triangles in the figure. Okay, so pause the video, give this a shot. I'm going to go through and do something similar here. So I'm gonna say this is 30, which makes this 60, which makes this 30, which makes this 60. Okay, now when I'm looking at my answers here, okay, they're all kind of written a little bit different. So let's just see if we can follow this. So LNM in the big triangle, LNM is 30, 60, 90. So that's the order that they give the angles in, 30, 60, 90. So let's, say if, let's see if they continue to do, do this correctly. MLO, no, 60, 30, 90. So this one doesn't work. NML, 60, 90, 30. So this one went 60, 90, 30. Let's see if this one does. L-O-M. No, nope, starts with 30. Not okay. L-M-N. So for both of these, they're L-M-N. That's going to be 30, 90, 60. Okay? L-O-M, 30, 90, 60. I like that. M-O-N, 
30, 90, 60. I'm liking that result right there. Okay, so I'm just comparing those angles to make sure that the corresponding parts match up, you guys. Okay, all right. This is going to be a big one here, these proportions that you've set up. So when I draw in the altitude from the hypotenuse, I know that it creates similar triangles, and because of that, we can set up some proportions, and we create three equations, okay? And I would get these into your notes. These are the ones you're going to rely on for this section. So that altitude h is the geometric mean of the two parts of the hypotenuse. So h is the square root of x times y. If we're trying to solve for one of the outside points, one of the legs is the geometric mean between the part adjacent to it, so x, and the entire hypotenuse. So b is the square root of x times c, or a is the square root of y times c. Okay, so take a minute and write those down. You've got to have that in your notes. So if you need to pause the video and write it down, please do so. Okay, we're going to utilize these quite a bit in the next couple slides. All right. Find C, D, and E. Based upon the previous slide, E is that altitude. So E is the square root of 6 times 24. Okay? The two parts. Um, D is the square root of the adjacent part and the entire hypotenuse. So the square root of 6 times 30. And C is the square root of the adjacent part, which is 24, times the whole hypotenuse, which again is 30. Okay? That's how I'm going to solve each of those. They'll go through it with us on the next couple screens, so you'll get the answers. But these are the formulas I'm using from that previous slide. Okay? So they're going to start by solving for E, just like I did, 6 times 24, square root. Okay? Then they're going to solve for the other two. So that was 6 times 30 about 13.4, and then the next one should be 24 times 30, 26.8 or so, okay? All right, find e to the nearest tenth. Pause your video, give this a shot, okay? All right, so find e. All right, so that leg is the square root of the adjacent part, 16, and the entire length of the hypotenuse, 16 plus 4, or 20. So if, I, if you grab your calculator and you take, type in the square root of 16 times 20, you should get 17.9. If you did that, give yourself a pat on the back. Okay? So, pretty similar situation here. So Miss Allspatch is constructing a kite for her son. She has to arrange two support rods so that they are perpendicular. We knew that about a kite. Okay, the shorter rod is 27 inches long, so that's this length here. If she has to place the short rod 7.25 inches from one end of the long rod, so I know this distance is 7.25 in order to form the right triangles, what is the length of the entire rod? So what I have here, because that's 27 and because it divides this up into two equal parts, half of 27 is... 13.5, so that's this distance right here, okay? I know this is 7.25, and I'm gonna call that x, okay? Well, if I just look at the top triangle, I've got that altitude, 13.5, and that is supposed to be the square root of the two parts of the hypotenuse. Okay, so what we're going to see in the next slide is they're going to go through and they're going to solve that proportion. Well, once they do that, whatever they get for x, if we add 7.25 to it, we've got the entire length of that second rod. Okay, so let's do that. So if we follow, there's the triangle that I just sketched for you and that's how they got it. Okay, so we're going to set up that proportion. Square both sides. Divide by 7.25 and so that one length is 25, but then I gotta add that 7.25 back in, and I get 32.39 approximately for the length of that entire uh, rod. Okay, so pause the video, give this one a shot. 
All right, you guys, you got a similar statement. In the end, they're asking me to find the length of the aircraft. So all the way from A to C. Well, as I work through this, 211 is the length of that entire segment. So if I divide that by two, I get 105.5. This was 163, and we'll call that X. So 105.5 equals the square root of 163 times X, okay? That altitude's the geometric mean of the two parts of the hypotenuse. So now I'm gonna square both sides. And so I get 163 back in, I get 231.3 when it's all said and done. Okay, so know your formulas, know those uh, three geometric mean formulas. And there's your assignment. So good luck. If you have questions, please let me know.